In a fantastic speech made today by the shadow of leader of the House, Lucy Powell, she highlights all of the reasons why Tory majority has fallen. Now, normally, when you hear about a member of Parliament leaving because of some scandal or another, well, you just kind of think this. You're joking. Not another one? But when you actually put them all together like Lucy does, it's actually pretty grim. The amount of weirdos that the Conservatives have in their party, or had in their party, should I say. She also goes on to highlight that Sunak was proud that the Tory donor, who wanted an MP shot uh, because she's black, uh, supports the Conservatives. In Penny Morden's reply, it is just a lot of whataboutery. I'll give her her due, though. She does actually put the effort in, and she's come up with some answers. Unlike Sunak, who clearly just wings it. With every week that passes, their majority gets smaller and smaller. This week, it was another defection. But the reasons for their dwindling numbers does not make for pretty reading, Mr Speaker. In no particular order. Tractor porn. Drug abuse. A conviction for paedophilia. Breaking parliamentary rules on paid lobbying. Groping. Misleading Parliament. Flashing at staff. Tantrums because they weren't given peerages. Eating camel penis. It might sound ridiculous, but it's actually not funny. It all brings Parliament into disrepute and drags our politics through the gutter. And now this week we have had overt racism from the Conservative Party's biggest donor. I had to check myself yesterday, Mr Speaker, that the Prime Minister really said that he was pleased. He was pleased that this man who said a black woman MP should be shot and that Indians should climb on the roof of trains supported his party. Is she pleased? Yet it shamefully took him more than 24 hours Shame. to finally say the remarks by the Tories' biggest donor that looking at the right honourable member for Hackney North and Stoke Newin, Newington makes you want to hate all Shame. black women were indeed racist. Yep. In November, the Prime Minister accepted a non-cash donation to the tune of £15,000 from Frank Hester for the use of his helicopter. Mm. So will he reimburse him, yes or no? <coughs> no, no, Mr Speaker. And I'm pleased, that, I'm, pleased that, I'm pleased that the gentleman is supporting a party that represents one of the most diverse governments in this country's history, led by this country's first British Asian Prime Minister. And will she use his resources in her marginal Portsmouth North constituency. Surely, if he's a racist, which he clearly is, he has no place in the Conservative Party and they should give him his money back. The Conservative Party is unleadable. For the sake of the nation, it's better to go early than allow this psychodrama to continue. The Honourable Lady raises about Mr Hester's remarks. They were racist and abhorrent. And I fully understand threatening to the Right Honourable Member for Hackney North and Stoke Newington, who I understand has referred the matter to the police. My party is funded by fundraising and donations, notably raffles, donations from private individuals. There might be some, there might be some, Mr Speaker, that would come to this dispatch box today and attempt to argue that such a refund isn't practically possible or warranted, but I'm not going to attempt to do that. The point the Honourable Lady has made is not concerned with the practicalities of doing so or the consequences to CCHQ's payroll or the ability of my party to fight a general election. No, no, it is a point of principle and I respect that. She could not have been clearer in what she has said today. She has stated that it is wrong to take funds from people who say horrible things, no matter when they were said. Yeah. And when there is an issue, funds should be returned. Yeah. She has been clear about that today, and yeah. she has said that that is the right yeah. thing to do. Well, if, for example, someone have sa has said of Hamas yeah. that one man's terrorist is another man's oh. freedom fighter, as Dale Vince has said, yep. oh. or that I and my colleagues should be taken out and shot, yeah. as the RMT union boss Steve oh. Headley yeah. has yeah. said. Yeah. The Honourable Lady would presumably think it wrong to hang on to funds donated to Labour by an organisation branded, and I quote, as institutionally sexist. 
I think that under Tom Roach's time as GMB Secretary uh, General, running, uh, and I quote, a casting couch culture menacing young women in the union, the Labour Party took 12 million quid from him. Those three charmers alone, Mr. Speaker, have contributed £15 million to the Labour Party, which presumably, immediately following this session, the Honourable Lady will demand is repaid. To be precise and to assist her in that matter, those donations were made directly to the Central Labour Party, Labour MPs, MSPs, councillors, the Mayor of Manchester, she might like to mention that this weekend, deputy, the Deputy Leader of the Labour Party and the Leader of the Opposition. If Labour are sincere in this matter, and this is not a political stunt, they'll commit to repaying those funds. There would be some additional upsides to doing so too. The scurrilous suggestions that Labour's pro-stop oil policies were anything to do with Mr Vince's donations would no longer be able to be deployed. The charge that Labour were in the pockets of militant trade unions and that's why they wouldn't support our legislation to protect public access to the services they pay for. But I'm not holding my breath, Mr Speaker, because I know that Labour say one thing and do another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've dropped their £28 billion spending pledge on decarbonisation, yet they keep the policy. The Tories dropped themselves in it by saying the quiet bit out loud. And if you want to know what that was, then you need to click the video that's on screen now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, and I'll see you next time.